Vertical gardening is using walls and trellises, arches, string, and even existing trees and shrubs to grow plants up. It's really useful because it can help to cover walls and create windbreaks. It also creates visual interest and makes the most of your growing space, especially small gardens, greenhouses, and polytunnels. Today I'm sharing a new DIY trellis that we've just built, including instructions on how you can recreate it at home. And then after that, we're going to have a casual stroll around the garden and look at other vertical gardening and trellis ideas that I use here in the home garden. Here's the trellis that we just finished making yesterday. Isn't it beautiful? And it's making use out of the south facing wall that gets full on sun. And it looks really nice on the wall there too, really breaks up that space between the door and the window. One of the great things about this trellis is that it is super cheap to make. It costs practically nothing. And I've left a list of the few materials and pieces of equipment that you'll need down in the video description. The trellis is also really versatile and you can grow anything from sweet peas to garden peas up it. And I think it looks really good. What do you think? The first step in making this trellis is sourcing the wood. You can use any sticks or bamboo that you'd like. We live near the sea, so we went for a walk along the beach last weekend and picked up driftwood. The trellis is 74 inches tall, 28 inches wide at its widest, and 24 inches wide at its narrowest. It's screwed onto the wall in three places for support, but also to give about a three quarter inch gap between the wall and the wood. The next step is screwing three relatively thick pieces into the wall. They're about three feet apart and screwed in on either end of the stick about five inches in. We worked out where to place them and Josh drilled holes for the long screws. They went in a good couple of inches, but you may not need to make ones as deep. When the holes were drilled, Josh put brown roll plugs inside before we move to the next step. To create a spacer to create that three quarter inch gap between the wall and the trellis, we cut driftwood into three quarter inch discs and Josh drilled pilot holes through them so that they wouldn't split later on. He also drilled pilot holes through the driftwood rungs so they wouldn't split either. A long three inch screw then went through the driftwood, the spacer and into the holes in the wall. In the end, there were three sturdy rungs attached to the wall. The next step requires string or twine. I use natural jute string, which should last outdoors for at least a couple of years. If you wanted to use string that lasts for years longer, you probably need to look for synthetic twine. I think this next weaving step is best done in situ on the wall. It will keep the string tight and the rungs level and will be much more attractive as a piece. However, if you're not able to physically get up a ladder, you could potentially weave these pieces together on the ground or a table. In my case, I got up a ladder and started from the top rung. I draped four lines of twine over the top rung so that a length of twine went down the back and a piece went down the front. The length of them was about three feet longer than the trellis itself. Once they were draped over that top rung, I knotted them together underneath using a double knot. Then it was time to attach the next rung. To strengthen the line, I twisted the two strands of twine together slightly before making an overhand knot just above where I wanted the next rung to go. Then I started making a simple knot underneath, slid the wood through, and then secured it before knotting again. I don't think that it makes much of a difference where you start in making the knots as far as the four strands are concerned, but I preferred working from the inside out. After doing one, I'd knot the other inner twine and then finish off the end links. Then all you do is repeat this all the way down to the bottom rung that's screwed into the wall. The challenge here is keeping your twine from tangling up, especially if you've got cats around. Both Maggie and Comet did not help with this project at all. When finished, just a little bit of string is left at the bottom. You can trim this off or you can use it to help train plants or secure the trellis to the wall. And here's the finished piece. It took several hours to create, but it's sturdy, it looks great, and it's ready for some climbers. 
in all, I think it took about three and a half hours to build this trellis start to finish, not counting the time that we spent walking along the beach finding the wood. And to be fair, most of that time was spent putting the rungs on and creating all of these knots because the wood here is quite irregular in size and shape and also there's a lot of knots so that did take the majority of the time but I think that if you use straighter wood or bamboo that it could be a lot quicker. Now the final thing that I need to do with this is of course plant it up with something that's going to look beautiful climbing up it but before we get to that let's go have a little walk around the garden and check out some other trellises and vertical gardening solutions that are there right now. Although a lot of people have already taken down their peas, mine are still going strong. And you can see there's plenty here for picking. And earlier this spring, I supported the peas that I grew in a gutter with these sticks. They're just leftover sticks from garden waste, essentially. And the peas grew up them beautifully. This is how tall they get. So really easy for picking, good for windy places. But I was finding that they were swaying back and forth in the winds that we were having. And so I put a couple of the hoops on either side. These are the hoop supports that I use for netting generally. And they're from a company called Gardening Naturally. I'll leave a link down in the video description if you're interested in learning about them. You can see there's one over there with some netting on it. Another one over there beyond Maggie. And this has actually worked out to be a really good trellising support for peas. And I think it kind of looks nice too. One of the first things that I planted here in the garden were these minaret trees. They grow vertically and you can train them to grow over an arch. And you can see that this metal archway that I'm using as a trellis is doing its job and it's helping me to train these trees to go around them. Let me just take a step back so that you can see more from this perspective. So there are two apple trees, minaret trees on either side, and eventually they'll cover the entire arch and they're already producing fruits. they will be normal sized apples and they're all different varieties. And then the minaret trees that I have growing just vertically against these wooden supports here. They're just poles really. They're doing well and I'm getting some fruit off of them as well. We've got some pears, obviously. These two are, are cherries. I've got a couple more apples over here on this arch and another cherry on the far end. And again, we can see the arch down here. It's giving that really lovely effect, that curve in the garden, and it's just practical as well. As a support, these willow obelisks have been fantastic because they provide vertical space that plants can grow in and that I can attach them to. And this year, this little one, I put in the middle of a bed of chamomile and calendula. Now the chamomile has gone over. I'm gonna take this out soon. It's self-seeding everywhere down below there. And I'll take the little seedlings out at the end of the year and transplant them. And then down here, I've got a couple more. And last year I grew yacon for the first time these plants here. They produce these really juicy tubers, but they do grow quite tall and they flop over. And so that's why I've planted them inside these willow obelisks. And you can use any other kind of bendy wood or material to make these, I think. You don't have to use just willow. And they look nice. And again, it's going to create that nice vertical support, that trellising that these plants will need. Climbing beans are an obvious candidate for a vegetable that needs some place to grow vertically. And this is a bit of a mishmash of a bean structure from Gardening Naturally and some bamboo. And I found that this structure, at least in the allotment, it was not withstanding the winds here on the Isle of Man and it got knocked down several times. And so I've supported it here with bamboo canes and string and it seems to be doing all right thus far. As far as the beans, these are all French beans and they're all pretty much different varieties, many of them heritage varieties. And then either end, I've got a chocha. 
This is a South American vegetable. It produces these little fruits that look very prickly, but they're velvety soft, and you can use them just like sweet peppers. Here is another growing structure for beans. These are all borlotti beans, and so I'm not picking any of the pods. I'm just going to let them grow and dry out, and they grow vertically up this wigwam. And you can see it's just bamboo and string, and I will help the beans along their way as they grow. And this structure is really good for windy places, much more than having a row of canes. It just withstands the wind so much better. Quite a few years now, I built a pallet trellis for cucumbers at the allotment, and I've done it again. And you can see there's a, a few plants down here at the bottom. And I've also made the addition of putting the string up the front because I feel that the cucumbers needed a little bit of help in finding their way up. And if you just tuck the leaves underneath, I think that will work in helping them grow right up the face. Now this pallet has less space between the planks than the previous one that I used, so I don't think we'll have as many fruit growing down between the gaps, but I'll be able to come out here and pick the fruits off the face of this. And potentially, I could plant something underneath as well that likes it a little bit shadier. I try to make the most of vertical growing space here in the polycrub. And let's have a look at some of the different plants growing vertically using trellises or some kind of a support. We've got the tomatoes right down the middle this year, and they are growing up strings, which are wound around the plant. I just keep winding the plant around as it grows up. Sometimes they get quite tall, like up here, and it's a little bit of a challenge. Also growing on strings over here, I have a few plants. The ones on either end, these are Lufa, and this is the first year I'm growing them. I tried last year, but the plants just didn't take, and you can see the beginnings of the fruit here. And again, I've just provided a string, and as the growing tip gets a little bit taller, I just kind of help it along its way. We've got the garlic harvest here drying out. That is pretty much ready to braid, but I'm going to let it dry out just a little bit longer. And then the bed over here, the plants are relatively low growing, but I will be supporting the aubergines in the back before long. The same goes for the peppers over in this bed, but have a look at that fencing trellis that we put up against the far wall. And it is doing its job as far as giving a space for the sweet potatoes to grow. But I will have to say that the sweet potatoes are not very cooperative. You really do need to train them to go up this. It's not like they learn that they can grow up it and then continue growing. You really do have to train them to weave in and out of the fencing. But I think that if you have minimal space and you need to grow sweet potatoes indoors, this will work. You just have to keep on top of training those vines to go up. Now it's time to get the trellis planted and I've already put in one plant, a quite overgrown sweet pea that I had in the greenhouse and this is perfect for showing exactly how plants can twine in and out of this trellis and look absolutely lovely. And I have a second one of these that is a little bit overgrown and I was very tempted to put it in as well but this probably won't last very long now that we're in midsummer. Instead, what I would like to put in is a new type of vegetable. On complete impulse, when I was in England not too long ago, I bought some seeds. They are Malabar spinach, and from what I can taste of the leaves so far, they are absolutely delicious. They taste like spinach, but more succulent and almost salty in flavor and they're climbers. And so I'm gonna put one here and see how it does outdoors. And then I'm gonna put the rest of these somewhere in the polycrub or in the greenhouse because they do like warm weather. 
Well, that is the spinach planted and watered and now it's just waiting for it to do its thing, to climb up this new trellis that we've made for it. And I'm very curious to see how it does because as I've just said, this is a new to me vegetable. So if you have experience in growing Malabar spinach, let me know as a comment down below what to expect, how tall they get, if you have any tips for growing or using it in cooking. And as far as sticks and twigs and driftwood, it's pretty much free material, garden waste, and there are so many ways that we can use it in our gardens. And I have some videos here on Lovely Greens, but I also have a comprehensive list of different projects over on my website, and I'll leave a link down to where you can find those stick and twig ideas and garden projects in the video description. I even have some videos here that you can watch, including the DIY Willow Obelisk, and you can watch that next. I'll be back in a couple of weeks, and we're going to be doing the garden in July. I can't wait. I'll see you then.